Yeah, HG, it's it's a hard one to say. It's called hyperemesis gravidarum. Um, and it's an illness that happens to pregnant women. Um, and it can happen for some parts of your pregnancy or like in my case, for your entire pregnancy. And it involves um, extreme nausea and extreme vomiting. So when I say extreme, um, like eight to 24, 30 times a day kind of thing. Um, so that obviously leads to some dehydration. Um, and as one can imagine, the inability to do a lot of uh, things in your regular life. So something like this, because I assume it's very different from morning sickness. Um, were you diagnosed with HG or did you just look online and said, guess what, uh, Dr. Google or what was it, ask, ask Jeeves back in the day on, hey, I have HG. Yeah, so unfortunately, um, I was never actually told that I have HG uh, or I had HG during my pregnancy. It took me quite a few months of looking um, uh, looking on the internet and finding other people's stories and slowly piecing the puzzle together. It was a, it really was a puzzle to me because, yeah, like I said, when um, my my general practitioner, my family doctor, who every woman goes to at the beginning of their pregnancy, um, I expressed my concern of vomiting, but she didn't tell me what was actually happening to my body. She she uh, didn't mention hyperemesis gravidarum, didn't mention HG, also. Um, didn't mention any resources uh, to use in such a horrendous um, state of existence. And so, um, yeah, they didn't, uh, they didn't tell me, and sorry, the, the OB that I went to next, um, the one who was going to deliver my baby and be responsible for my care for the rest of my pregnancy, I think um, usually start seeing them around month six. So at this point, I was already puking for six months, like hard. Um, and so, yeah, I, I tell her, hey, yeah, I'm, I've been puking this entire time. At this point, I'm I'm pretty exhausted. I don't got a lot left in me. I'm just like, yes, I'm puking a lot. Uh, unfortunately, she just kind of called me a puker and dismissed me and just, just kept dismissing me after every appointment. And so, um, yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I decided to take my health into my own hands a little bit, uh, just based on the... Um, the doctor's lack of knowledge, their lack of resources, and um, the fact that they just wanted to keep prescribing me pill after pill after pill. Um, and so, yeah, I actually used cannabis during my HG pregnancy. Wow. So saying that, um, again, it's something that we're always told not to do in, during pregnancy is drink, smoke, um, do this, don't do that, don't do that you somewhat went against it by using cannabis. So what you really had to shut down your mommy instance and really figure out saying, guess what? I don't care what society says. I want what's best for me and my baby. So how did you go through that process? Mm -hmm. It was a huge weight on me, huge. Um, and you're just constantly anxious because you're thinking about uh, your baby's health and then obviously your own health too. Um, because you want for both of both of you to make it through it. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I never, well, I used cannabis a little bit, maybe a couple months before pregnancy. I, I noticed it helped with sleeping, a little bit of anxiety, stuff like that. Um, I was not a like chronic user, never, never used like all the time. Um, and so when all of these different ways of trying to stop my nausea wasn't working. I remembered, hey, I remember how my body feels when I, when I consume cannabis and that's calm and at like a, you know, you, you feel good and you, your body feels relaxed, things like that. And I was like, you know what? I'm desperate. Let's, let's try it. And I, I guess my, my brain was like, just try it, just try it. <laughs> um, and it worked. Mm -hmm. I kept working. And at that point, my health um, was all, was just, or sorry, my health and my baby's health was very, or in danger, I guess is, is the way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I just, I chose plant medicine. Um, so saying that, did you do any research in regards to cannabis use during pregnancy? Uh, was there a doctor recommendation or 
really, you just, like you said earlier, just took everything into your hands and just remember the feeling of using uh, cannabis that made you feel relaxed. Yeah, so I did, um, I never mentioned it to my doctors, um, kind of just based on what happened um, and yeah, my story there. But um, I was searching the internet mostly for people's stories um, after this because my immediate searches on Google resulted in a lot of um, anxiety because it, there was, it was saying things like um, negative things, uh, harm, harm to the fetus, harm in later, later development, stuff like that. But then you start to see the flaws in the research the further you go and you start to hear from moms um, who experienced the same thing as you. And we weren't, um, a lot of our voices were never heard before because the internet wasn't so um, widespread in, in previous decades, um, such as for my own mom, for example. Um, and so, yeah, we started to hear stories, we started to hear stories of people um, and their experiences. And to me, an HG mom's personal truth and their personal story is so much more valuable to me than a doctor who's never been through hyperemesis gravidarum and can't even like tell or can't can't tell me that I have hyperemesis gravidarum. Like if, yeah, it just sometimes it, it upsets me because OBs get paid a lot of money um, mm -hmm. to do their job. And when you're when you're allowing someone to basically, uh, well, you feel like you're dying for nine months. It's 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 um a fact somewhere somewhere out there in the hg online world but yeah um the fact that they just didn't tell me is just mind mind blowing mind blowing <laughs> so saying all this did you try any natural any other natural ways to cure your hg uh, besides <laughs> resorting to cannabis yeah i did um natural ways i tried acupuncture they said sometimes that can help so I tried that that was I'm not sure if I would do acupuncture again it was kind of painful um, and then I did um oh I tried CBD spray so obviously not going to the THC right away I wanted to try CBD oil um CBD spray so that was something that I took orally in um I guess like not an edible but yeah like an oil form of consuming cannabis mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it did not work because it didn't relieve nausea right away. Um, when you uh, consume cannabis through water vapor or smoking, it hits your system a lot faster. And that's um, what, I was, what I like capitalized on, I guess. And so, yeah, the oils did not work, unfortunately. I tried, I guess, other natural things that to me just seem so silly. Ginger, healthy eating, obviously. <laughs> um, all these like, I guess, suggestions that maybe people would be like, oh, just try this. Oh, just try this. But it's, it's crazy how serious or it's crazy how quickly it gets serious in HG and how quickly those suggestions and they're, they're well-meaning, um, but how quickly those suggestions just don't mean anything <laughs> in terms of your survival on a daily basis. You just hit a key word and that was survival. Describe what a typical day would be while you were suffering with HG during your pregnancy? Oh yeah, wow. Um, I woke up at around four to five every single day. Um, and I played the game of, am I gonna puke up the dinner I had last, the little bits of dinner I put in my stomach last night. So it really came down, I had to really watch what I eat because it was based, it was all based on like how okay it was to come back up as gross as that sounds. But yeah, um, I would wake up at like, four to five every day, puke and then shake a lot. <laughs> um, sweat would be dripping, like my, my floor would have sweat on it. I have to change my clothes, my hair is soaking wet. Um, and then I would consume cannabis and it would help bring me back to homeostasis essentially, like where I'm not shaking, not sweating. Um, and it, it helped immensely. And at the beginning, it actually decreased my puking by 50% um, for the first six months. And then month six to nine for me um, got pretty bad. And it, my puking was <laughs> ferocious. And, uh, but cannabis still helped in the in every day. <laughs> um, and sorry, yes, getting back to the daily um, kind of how HG goes. So um, 
I would consume cannabis after puking, um, and then I would try and get something into my system to eat or to drink. Tap water, instantly puking again. So I had to, um, usually it was like kind of bubbly, um, like those bubbly things, or, or else Coke sometimes would really help, um, just bubbly drinks. And then I would try and eat something. So my breakfast every morning consisted of like those, um, those nutritional, what's it called? Those like boost drinks, you know, the extra calories. Oh, yeah. you drink them sometimes when you're sick or um, older people drink them sometimes if they have problems eating. I, hey, I drink them every now and then. I'm not old. I take offense to that. <laughs> I mean, hey, they're, they're a good, easy, quick meal for sure. Right. For sure. <laughs> but when you're drinking them every day, oh my gosh, I swear I never wanted to see one of those things again. But unfortunately, my postpartum, I ended up drinking a lot more of them. But anyway, so yes, I would try and get food in my system. Um, and then I had, we got a puppy two days before I got pregnant and found out I had HG. So I was taking care of a hundred pound puppy at that time. So that was a little tricky. So I'd try and get out and walk her though. And that's where cannabis really helped is I was able to walk my dog every day and, um, do yoga. Um, cannabis helped me eat and to drink, like I kind of said earlier. Um, and this is something that I need to kind of like sometimes tell myself, okay, Tori, take a second here and remember like all of those HG moms who didn't have the opportunity to do that because moms who um, choose to, I guess, maybe go the medical route and are in hospital every week, hooked up to IVs, hooked up to, um, I think like feeding tubes, stuff like, like intense stuff. And they're still vomiting like crazy and they're in hospital hooked up. And then there was me like, yes, I was doing bad. I was doing really bad, but I had cannabis and that was my saving grace because I was, I was able to, yeah, like I said, do yoga, which was really important in building strength for when you give birth. Mm -hmm. So that's something that a lot of HD moms can't even do. And so for them to go into, a, into birth, not being strong and in fact, like being weak because they've been in the hospital, that just like breaks my heart. <laughs> Yeah, and makes sense. Yeah. Makes very yeah. sense. Yeah. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I didn't really think about that in that, in that sense, um, in regards to literally the physical strength being zapped out of you, especially like when puke and, and your day to day activities do that. Because um, the fact, because you said something specific in the beginning of that was when you woke up in the morning, you'll puke up whatever little dinner you had. So, did it affect your meal? on like the day before like what you could and could not eat or was it like you ate something that night and then you would puke it up that night and then sleep and then puke again like um yeah I guess like my my vomiting usually stopped around 8 or 9 p.m and that's okay. when I would fall asleep <laughs> um, and then I was able to usually get it get to sleep till about four or five and um cannabis helped with my sleep I would like to definitely say that as well gotcha um mm -hmm. You saying it earlier is something that you hid from your doctors. How was your partner um, and family members or friends when they found out uh, that you were smoking cannabis or using cannabis um, during your pregnancy? Mm -hmm. um, so with my HG story and the fact that I used cannabis, I had to keep it from everyone. Um, HG is equivalent to going through chemotherapy um, and uh, HG moms need the support that a chemotherapy patient would get from their family essentially. Um, it's it's incredibly hard and yeah I wasn't able to tell anyone out of fear um, because I mentioned earlier I was pretty new to cannabis. Um, I just lacked knowledge. Um, I lacked like the ability to advocate for myself if I was like questioned or challenged. And so, yeah, I did keep my, I kept my mouth shut. And in, in the end, it did a lot of damage, a lot of damage. And I like to tell moms these days to make sure you're not doing it alone. <laughs> Don't make my mistake. And, you know, if you can't tell your friends and family, at least we do have a community of moms online um, that are out there. And if they, if you ever need help, like I can, I connect moms to them on a daily basis. So yeah, if anyone ever needs help, they can reach out to me. Difference between morning sickness and HG as well. Right. Yes. Okay. Um, so 
with that, it is hard to determine like if you haven't been through it. And this is where um, our doctors need to educate themselves about what is the difference between um, morning sickness and HG if it's happening to millions and millions of women and affecting our healthcare systems. Um, and so I would characterize HG by weight loss of over five pounds during pregnancy. Um, I would characterize it as puking past your second trimester. Um, and yeah, cyclical vomiting, dehydration, inability to do tasks on a like regular task that you would normally be able to do. <laughs> Basic human functions, eating, sleeping, drinking, socializing, even really everybody needs to socialize a little bit and that gets completely taken from you during HG. Um, and yeah, just really mostly the excessive vomiting <laughs> is how you can best set it apart when it doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. hmm. So you mentioned support and from a previous podcast and even also a previous talks, we talked about a great foundation, which is the HERS Foundation. Um, how did you hear about the HERS Foundation and did you use it in any aspect through your HG or did you find out about it after um, your pregnancy? I found out about it after my pregnancy and that broke my heart because every every mom going through HG deserves to know about the Her Foundation. Um, they're extremely helpful. Um, they provide a lot of advice, a lot of like, I guess warnings as to what could happen, what to look out for, what your friends and family can look out for in you because you're, you're in such a dire condition that it's hard to do that for yourself sometimes. Um, so yeah, they're, they're a great resource and I point moms in that direction all the time. Mm -hmm. um, there's other resources starting to be generated out there. I think another one is called One Mom Too Many and Pregnancy Sickness Support on mm -hmm. Instagram. Um, I think those ones are also really good resources for moms. That's good. Um, are you doing any advocacy or bring an awareness to HG because I know I've seen your TikTok page and it's just HG, HG, HG. <laughs> but besides that, uh, anything else that you're doing like on the side uh, in regards to bring that awareness to others? Yeah. So like you said, um, I did start an Instagram and TikTok page just advocating for um, or bringing awareness of HG and advocating actually for plant medicine to be um, considered during HG pregnancy. Um, I like to uh, use my own story and show moms the benefits that it did for me, um, like I was just kind of saying before. And uh, on top of that, yeah, I'm kind of just getting started. I'm 10 months postpartum now, and I'm finally able to kind of revisit it because it was pretty traumatic. And so the first few months after birth, I really couldn't do much about it and do what I wanted to do. So um, the HER Foundation actually offers like pamphlets that you can deliver to your OB clinic that didn't maybe take care of you the best that they could have and mm -hmm. so I did that um so moms can know that they're they can make a little bit of a difference um by doing that in their local communities and I've been connecting with a lot of local moms who have HG currently and I get lots of like friends or mo friends friends moms like sending me um stories of people they know um people who are like reaching out to facebook groups um in their community being like has anybody gone through the sickness before um and yeah they point them in my direction and then i'm able to provide those resources right away like the her foundation um and then also just kind of start a conversation with them and um i hope i hope i'm helping them <laughs> that's good um mm -hmm. You mentioned that word a couple times is postpartum. How is postpartum after HG? Um, different for everyone, of course, but in my case, um, oh, postpartum was really, really, really hard for me. Um, I, lo I lost 55 pounds in six months. And um, how do I say this? Like, I just kind of felt like I was withering away like I couldn't feed myself um I couldn't I could barely feed my baby because I was breastfeeding or I chose to breastfeed and no one around me made it feel safe enough to quit breastfeeding and so I was put through the trauma unfortunately of giving absolutely every ounce of what was in my body to my baby which 
you do as a mom, but I in turn paid the price, um, like physiologically and mentally. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, HG resulted in um, postpartum depression for me, some pretty bad postpartum anxiety. And then like the biggest one that comes from HG is PTSD. Um, now this is different for everyone, um, but I went to a PTSD therapist right after um, after discovering that I had some issues I needed to sort out in, in terms of my appetite and weight loss and stuff like that. Um, and she told me um, that HG moms, like it's, a, it's equivalent to um, surviving a war sort of. And so yeah, PTSD, the triggers that come back. So all of it all being with food. Uh, and for me, like it was so, it was so crazy because pictures would trigger my nausea and vomiting if it I gave birth in the summertime if I saw a picture with snow like snow in it because I was pregnant when it was snowing outside like I just wanted to head to the toilet it was horrible or like this um any type of meat for six months after giving birth I couldn't do and um you need protein when you're <laughs> breastfeeding and taking care of a newborn um and yeah, yeah, postpartum has been pretty rough. And I know I've learned I'm not alone. And I've learned there's other moms like me out there um, experiencing these things. And they're, it's, time, it's time for change because a lot of this could have been prevented, in my opinion. Well, not a lot. Obviously, HG can't be prevented, but supported. It could have been a lot more better supported if the people around me and my, my medical care team had the resources and the education um, about HG. Yeah. Does it scare you to have a second child because of the experience that you went through? <sighs> yeah, oh, okay, this is such an interesting question um, because a lot, of, a lot of the time, the answer is like no for moms who went through stuff like that. And for me, for the first couple months, of course, I was like, nope, I'm not doing this ever again. This is horrible. But now I've come to realize if given the proper support, the resources, I feel like I'm kind of repeating that because it's just so important. Um, given the resources, given the support, I think I could make it through it again because I always wanted four kids. Like if you asked like 15 year old Tori, 20 year old Tori, how many kids do you want one day? It was always four. And then HG has like robbed that from me kind of. And it makes me, makes me a little bit sad, a little bit mad, but also to know that like, this is so many women's like realities of giving birth to children. Um, yeah, it could just, it could just be done in a lot better way if well supported and more resources. <laughs> That's, that's fair. That's actually a fair answer. Um, anything that you want to add, share, or yeah, add or share? <laughs> hmm. no, I, don't, I don't think so. Oh, I, yes, I actually did have one kind of interesting point for people to think on. You said earlier, like, how is it different from like a hangover food poisoning? And I was like, that is exactly what HG feels like. Your worst hangover that you've ever experienced, if you've ever experienced one. Um, and if you can't relate to that, food poisoning from like the worst, um, I don't know, seafood you've ever eaten. That's what HG feels like. So just a little like, I guess, com comparison for those who have never experienced. <laughs> oh, one thing to touch base on, um, support. And that's the biggest thing is support. How was the support with your partner in HG? and things that you would recommend that you had from a partner mm -hmm. during your experience that you had? Yeah, so I would recommend any HG mom to get their partner to immediately follow the Her Foundation on Instagram. Um, it, took, it took a lot of communication between me and my partner in terms of everything that happened. Um, I want people to know that partners can also suffer through postpartum depression and anxiety as a result of having a partner who has undergone HG. Um, and my, 
I, I firm, I firmly believe that my partner uh, went through that. Like I said, we're 10 months postpartum. And so we're currently just going through some couples therapy as well as individual therapy. And we'll be getting to to oops, topics like that, I'm sure soon in it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something I didn't really think about or realize until it was brought a, or uh, made aware to me actually by the HER Foundation. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I think this is, this is what's been happening to us as well. Um, and, but yeah, but okay, during my pregnancy, one thing I could also recommend to partners, husbands, is to really step up to the plate. So just recognizing that HG takes a huge toll. So cooking and cleaning are extremely, extremely hard. Um, I, I would say if you don't know how to cook as like a partner of an HG mom, well, guess what? It's going to be time to learn because that's going to be life-saving. Um, partners helping prepare food and family members helping prepare food is, um, yeah, incredible if you, if you are able to have that support. Just, it's those little things that really count uh, in regards right. to it. Yeah. 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 Well, Tori, it's been a pleasure like always. Um, I guess the biggest thing is everyone look at the Hearst Foundation for pretty much anything uh, related to pregnancy. It's a great foundation from what I've read previously. And it gives a lot of information that I think a lot of us um, both um, mothers to be, uh, fathers to be as well. Um, those things that I think a lot of people need to know before getting into having kids. Mm 